Um, but it was a great campaign. I mean, Andrew's right. He was the smallest guy that we worked with. Um, this, this I love because this was uh, the product of four hours of arguing between myself and Malcolm Jones, a fantastic our lead designer based in Sydney. And I was sitting on a sofa in Brussels, and he was in Sydney. We argued so long about the headline for Andrew's campaign. We knew it had to get your attention. If you're on the escalators, you've got 1.4 seconds to make them look at your posters. And because Andrew is a gay travel company, we could take this phrase and say, this is so gay, and make it a positive, which we did. All of the destinations, we had five cities. Now, one US state came in at the 11th hour. We had literally had to buy extra spaces in Covent Garden in the elevators to accommodate the state of South Carolina. It was approved at the appropriate level by the international sales manager of South Carolina. All of the other destinations signed off on it. All of the other destinations thought it was terrific. Atlanta is in the media on the record saying this for 5,000 US dollars, this was a fantastic value campaign. Maya Lake Rays from Vegas, I rang when the publicity started and said, are you comfortable with this? And, and Maya said, no, we are comfortable with this. You've done the right thing. Vegas is, is a, you know, we can be a so gay destination, but when politicians get involved, be careful. Uh, all I would say is if you're going to do PR, manage it, as Andrew said, that's really important. Also get buy-in. If you have to go all the way to the governor's office, which we shouldn't have had to, then go to the governor. And um, This is showing you the reaction. Now, this is people going up the escalator. Here are the posters. Ladies pointing them out, they're talking about them. I have video of two people taking photographs of our posters. I've never seen that in London. Uh, if you look at this one, this lady is, um, I don't know, just not doing much at all. All these people are either looking at our posters, they ran, it was fabulous. You could see nothing but so gay, so gay, so gay, so gay going up there. I was so proud. I must have gone around about 40 times that day. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, Security I mean, got really worried. <laughs> Security said, what are you doing? I'm filming and I'm going around and around. But these guys, everyone's looking at the posters, you know. Um, what was the day? Second. When did this happen? That was Pride last year. So 28th of July, to, 28th of June, June to the 9th of July. But it is just, just very interesting that you buy the space for a two-week element and your poster stays there until somebody buys that space. So when I went down that escalator last week, there was still one poster left. Uh, <laughs> and I hope it was Amro Worldwide. It was, yes, so it was an Amro Worldwide one. That's yes, good, I'm yes. The other thing I just, just mentioned um, again is that you can see all the people looking. I have done some research, and we reckon that a poster on the underground gets caught by two or three people out of every 20 that they actually catch, it catches their eye and look at it. You just look there and we're up about 12 or 14 out of 20 people catching it. And it, it was an ama um, absolutely amazing sight, wasn't it, Ian? Standing at the bottom and just seeing this all the way up. Yeah, it was. I remember the first time I saw it on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but as I said, get organisational buy-in. If you work for a government authority, make sure as high as you need to go, you've done it. Um, this is a quick, very, very fast piece of tape while I get another water. This is what happened. Roby is back talking about the danger, I guess, of approving an ad campaign and outsourcing it. It's going to show uh, how two states can differ a lot philosophically, mm -hmm. let's say. So what does it mean to say something is, quote, so gay? Like, dude, that is so gay, or those shoes are so gay. Well, some feel this is a negative phrase of disapproval, but at least one international advertising company sees it as a great way to promote tourism. Now, they made posters that say Atlanta is so gay, Vegas is so gay, even Boston is so gay. Those apparently didn't cause a ripple, but when they got to South Carolina, the reaction, not so gay. So, <laughs> all over London subways trying to lure gay tourists to the U.S. The poster, Boston is so gay, recommends going to P-Town, touts Massachusetts as the first U.S. state with gay marriage. There was no reported uproar, but in South Carolina, different story. That poster said, explore in America most never see and highlights the state's golfing and gay beaches. Gay rights has been a political flashpoint in that state. South Carolina's governor and a state rep went ballistic. A low-level state tourism employee who approved the $5,000 payment for the posters was forced to resign, and officials are calling for a full investigation on how the marketing campaign got started in the first place. Now, South Carolina's governor called it inappropriate, a waste of taxpayers' dollars, and says, hey, look, this is a family-friendly state. Apparently, they are not hopping on the bandwagon, which could result in billions of dollars in tourism here. So kind of two issues here. You have one low-level employee approving a really edgy campaign 
without getting approval. In a very conservative state. In a very right. conservative state. Sort of not sensitive to cultural issues, if you will. Uh, but also, the term so gay traditionally did have a negative connotation, that it was sort of a, an epithet, but interesting that uh, gay rights groups, uh, the group in London said, they thought it was wonderful that sure. this was uh, promoting a very positive image. We're talking about 64 and a half billion dollar market in the U.S. gay tourism. Massachusetts has fully embraced it. They have commercials that show same-sex couples and Provincetown, and so they're spending millions of dollars to try to lure that market, and here's one state that's saying, no, nah, we don't even want to spend five grand on it. It's just different for us. Very right interesting. All right, Roby, thanks very much. The, the one point I have to always correct is it was not a low-level state employee. That was part of managing the PR. I'm sorry to say it. That was, we could use any epithet we want. That was a mistruth, a, a, a misstatement. That came out of the, the, the official spokespeople from South Carolina Parks, Recreation and Tourism, and apologies if they're here, but you shouldn't do that. It was actually the international sales manager, a terrific person with more than 15 years experience who became the fall guy, which is the one really horrible thing from my perspective. Um, but that, you know, you have to manage the PR, that one, that, that's what happened. Uh, one thing for Andrew's perspective, though, is if you think of the consumer, um, Andrew tells me he's doing more business this year, I think in the first three or four months, than you did in the whole of last year. So we're very proud of the rebranding for Amro Worldwide and, and the PR. So work the story, plan ahead. Don't forget the point is to sell stuff. The point wasn't actually to have what happened happen. Once it began, you had to manage it. It was like riding a bucking bull, bull every six minutes. It's a new thing on Google News that we, we had to look at. You can also use Web 2.0. A lot of the news stories allow you to put a comment. There was nothing wrong. If you look at some of those stories, you'll see, hello, it's Andrew Roberts from Amro Worldwide here. Thank you for covering our story, but you may like to also know, and that's part of the story now. That's important. You can do that. Um, always put the consumer first. The happy ending was the Charleston City paper in South Carolina was so embarrassed by their um, local people. They actually dedicated the entire issue of October 15th. <laughs> <laughs> this issue is so gay. <laughs> Exploring and celebrating Charleston's LGBT community. Okay, database marketing. Uh, build a database. Segment it according to how this contact is important, potentially to your business. And then work the database. Don't let it go stale. Um, manage it. You know, and, and also become become valuable, you know, by working your database, you become more valuable to the people in the database. When I say work it, I mean, you know, have a little bit of useful contact from time to time. Maybe send a general email out, an update. Not too often, you become a pest or spam, but you just, you stay on their radar screen as a potential partner, collaborator, um, supplier, or, or client. Um, for example, this is just one just from yesterday. Um, the, the, the very gorgeous posters here came as a PDF with me in Staples up the road. is fantastic. Um, wonderful service. While I was being served by Staples here on University, they had a free in-store display space prize for small businesses. So you could, if you won this month, you could take some space and promote your business in Staples. That builds their database. Small business is really important to Staples. You can do something similar. If you have a core target audience, you could actually think of, well, what do we have that we could give away this month to one of them that they might give us their contact and invite us to go into our database? And then you can work that database in the future. Um, now, these are, these are databases that we find could help you. Um, there's verticalresponse.com, icontact.com, constantcontact.com. Um, different people prefer different services. They're not the only ones. Uh, to be honest, the one I like for us is Vertical Response. The reason I like them is because they only charge you for the actual emails you send out. So even if you had an enormous list, if you didn't send an email this month, you pay zero. The other services will charge you a monthly fee based on the numbers of email uh, addresses in your list. So if you're, if you're not using it this month, you're going to pay anyway. Uh, and also, Vertical Response, do their webinars. You can sign up for free, sit their webinars. They're amazingly informative of how to work a database for your business's advantage. Yes. And also for a response, um, they give nonprofits free uh, free emails. It's like ten thousand per month. Just oh really? Yeah. Excellent. So you, you recommend vertical response as well? Um, yes. Okay, good. Well we're on the right we're on the right train then, I'm pleased. Uh, networking. 